You talk about the need for perseverance in your career going into politics and that you try not to let the negativity in. You try not to listen to the critics, that you've gotten a pretty thick skin mm -hmm. along the way. What advice would you give to others in terms of deflecting criticism, criticism or navigating uh, that intense scrutiny? Well, you know, and I, the beginning of the book, I said, if I had a daughter, there's certain things I would tell her. I would tell her that it's good to be smart, really smart and that some people may judge them on what they look like or what they wear, but they should spend far more time focused on what they do and what they say. And the reason why I started the conversation that way is because I think our women and girls um, have so much to offer. We, we have such life experience, so many things that if, if we put our minds to, we can make a difference. Any woman who wants to change her school lunch program at her kid's school because she thinks the childhood obesity rate needs to be tackled, or someone's going to change the curriculum because they want to have music and gym, for example, added back to their local school because they think it amplifies their children's ability to succeed and learn. Every woman's going to have an opinion about something that she cares deeply about, and that's why it's a call to action for them to say, your voice, your opinion matters. I often talk to leaders who cite their failures or a setback in their career as the most formative in propelling them forward and teaching them some critical lessons to fuel their future success. If you think of a failure or setback in that respect, what's been one of your most successful ones? You know, I talk about failure as being instructive, that it's okay to fight hard and lose because sometimes through that battle, you learn what you did wrong, how you could do it better, what your opponent thinks, how you can you know, perhaps win next time. And I used a very simple example about being a young squash player and getting so badly beaten on the court and not being able to handle it, but realizing it's not about necessarily winning, it's about learning from your opponent, sticking with it, not giving up. And so I share the story of our battle on sexual assault in the military. When, you know, when you're being a voice for men and women who would do nothing but die for our country if asked, when they're being so brutally assaulted and then disbelieved or blamed and getting no justice, that's a story that you, it compelled me to action, hearing their story, hearing their plight, because they're so brave, they're so courageous, and to be treated so poorly, you just can't get your mind around. And, you know, we weren't successful in getting the 60 votes we needed. We didn't overcome the filibuster, but what we did is we started a movement and we gave voice to these men and women who showed such courage by coming forward. And we are creating the momentum that will be necessary to do this reform. Not only is the Department of Defense on notice and they're trying their best to fix whatever they can, uh, but they know that uh, we are not going to give up this fight. This is a battle we are going to continue to fight until these men and women get justice. And so just because we failed that one time doesn't mean we are going to ever give up, and it doesn't mean we're not going to be successful ultimately. What's been the best piece of career advice you've received along the way? Well, I think the best advice I was ever given uh, really was from my mother and my grandmother that um, you should never give up, that, that there's nothing you can't do as long as you put your mind to it and work your hardest and keep trying. Uh, that determination and that doggedness really has helped me in every step of my career because a lot of the battles I fight really are lost causes from the beginning. And most experts would say you have no chance, no, no hope. And those are the ones that sometimes matter the most, that you have to keep fighting and you can't give up. You have to realize your efforts will build on other people's efforts. You'll be part of a longer struggle, a longer journey. And anytime you're fighting for civil rights or basic justice, they're never quick and they're never easy. Uh, and my, my grandmother really showed that in her life. You know, nobody handed her power. She, she was secretary in her state legislature, but she was smart enough to know that if she worked together with other women, they could amplify each other's voices and they could create a club, a women's democratic club that really was necessary for anybody to win an election. You needed their help and they became invaluable. And that's how they accrued and used power over time. And it, they made sure that the issues they cared about were being represented. How do you define the term power? I think power is the ability to influence outcomes. And it doesn't have to be avert. It can sometimes be uh, you know, behind the scenes. But it's important to know that you have a role to play regardless of where you hold it. And I give an example about how I cared so much about repealing don't ask, don't tell but being told by the White House that I wasn't the person they wanted to lead the bill. They wanted somebody more senior, someone on the right committee with the right history. And you know, that was very depressing at first. And I thought, you know, I, I can do this. <laughs> and they said, no, we prefer someone else. 
But I realized in that moment um, I could be a powerful advocate whether or not I was in charge. I could make a difference whether or not I was in charge. So for some young woman who's reading this book and saying, I'm not in charge of anything, it doesn't matter. You can make a difference. You can change outcomes by showing people you care. I've had young women write letters to their local newspapers holding senators accountable for votes they did not agree with. And those senators having to respond to these young women because they care so much. So anybody can make a difference, whether you're in charge or not in charge, whether you're just pushing it along or starting a debate or feeding a debate or being part of it, you can make a difference.